Grand Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance presented this week and every week to your home from the hospitals and back from over there. Hello, gang. I'm High Aberback, and here's another session of Command Performance. Yes, sir, a half hour loaded to the brim with answers to all that mail care of Armed Forces Radio Service, Los Angeles, USA. And running the program tonight, we have PFC John L. Kendall's favorite star, a master showman of radio, stage, and screen. You know, fellas, some people sock their money away in banks. Others bank their money away in their socks. I wouldn't say which alternative this man takes, but here he is now, Rudy Jingle Toes Valley. <laughs> Just the way you are I wouldn't change a thing in you For what have I to bring to you But love I glow all over when you smile I tremble when you touch my hand You think I only understand My heart Was sweet as could be, as sweet as could be. That's why I love you. And when I hold you in my arms, I begin to drift so far. I love you just as you are. for some of that valley vocalizing. Oh, it's swell. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Hi. Well, I'm very glad to be here. You know, something very special happened on my way in. I was held up by a mob of beautiful girls. Oh, it was fans, huh? Yes, and I have high hopes for a singing career. <laughs> One of the little darlings compared me to Frank Sinatra. Sinatra? Oh, no kidding. Yes, he said, Mr. Valley, compared to Frank Sinatra, you stink. <laughs> oh, no, really, no, no. I... However, I took it very graciously. Just as did Garmin would. In fact, if you go outside, you'll find her head print in the cement. Uh, well, suppose we get to the mailbag, Rudy, really, huh? That's a good idea. I'll tear open a letter. Uh, I'll tear open a letter. I'll tear open a letter. Now, I'll tear open a letter. Wee wee, Marie. Wee wee, Daddy. Wee wee. Wee wee. Wee wee. Wee wee. <laughs> good Lord, what was that? My mistake, I opened a, a French postcard. <laughs> Let's give it. Well, what's your first letter? Why, it's addressed to me personally. Imagine that. A wonderful tribute from the mayor of Las Vegas. Oh, what does it say? It says, Dear Rudy, I've seen your nightclub act, and I cannot thank you enough for singing your songs and telling your jokes in Las Vegas. When I heard you were coming to Nevada, I jumped for joy when I heard you would appear in Las Vegas. Please accept the thanks not only of myself, but of all the citizens in my fair city. And that's from the mayor of Las Vegas, huh? Yes. Yeah. This is how he spells Las Vegas. R E N O. Uh huh. And really, uh, what's that other letter? This is unbelievable. 
three boys in Korea who call themselves Lowbrow, Zoot, Snoot, and Sam write, ship us a short copy of the sound we love most in the Army. We mean that delectable, wonderful, beautiful sound, the voice of a top sergeant. Oh, they must be kidding. I'm sure they are. So instead, let's, let's uh, tend to the fellows who prefer beautiful girls to top sergeants. There are such boys, you know. And dress up the show with a visit from a brand new glamour gal. Oh, well, who's that, Ruby? Well, she's a very beautiful young lady indeed. One of the listeners' top pin-up favorites. After making just one movie, one movie, mind you, she became a full-fledged star. Here she comes to twinkle an old command, Dorothy Patrick. <laughs> Thank you. And hello, gang. And Rudy? So who's your friend over there? Oh, this is Hi Averbank. Uh, Hi, do you like Dorothy? She certainly is a she. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Uh-uh. Naughty, naughty. What's wrong? Didn't I do anything? Honey, you don't have to. <laughs> down, Averbank, down. Dorothy, I must admit, you... <laughs> I must admit, you surprised me. Somehow I expected you to be about 18 feet tall, skinny, and with a head that comes to a point. You did? How come? Well, I guess that's because at the movies, I always sit in the first row on the side over there. <laughs> now, Dorothy, I hear you're working very hard at MGM these days. What are you working on? The high wall. You're working on the high wall? Mm-hmm. Could I help you with that? <laughs> Why? What could you do? I'd be very glad to hold the ladder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dorothy, uh, do don't let Valley get into your picture. Why not? I think he's pretty good. Listen, the last movie he made wasn't released. It was Parole. <laughs> Listen, hey, you Cary Grant says I'm a great dramatic actor. And Dorothy, I'm willing to audition for you right now. Just so happens that I have with me a fine drama of the King Tucky Hill. Are we ready? Ready, Zeke? Leave us proceed. Well, now, here we go to the simple log cabin of the Simple Valley family. Let's walk up the hill and open the door of the log cabin. Get that door. You're letting out all the food. Well, that there was Ma Valley. The Ma Valley, as usual, is indulging in frantic, energetic activity. <laughs> Huh? Ah, if you must sleep with your head on the fireplace, at least close your mouth. I don't want nothing to happen to your new celluloid teeth. I uh, ain't nothing going to happen to my new celluloid teeth. They're so firm I can crack nuts with them. Oh, what happened? Any marshmallows? <laughs> Say, Ma, where's our son, Willie? Willie? He went down to the barn to do some milking. Milking? Why, that boy ain't got enough sense to milk. There's five things you got to remember when you milk the cow. Five things, Paul? Yep. First thing you got to remember is to put the bucket underneath the other four things. <laughs> Land the Goshen. Who can that be? Help! Help! Save me! Save me! I'm hiding from the sheriff at his blood house. I'm not bad. I didn't mean to wreck that train or shoot them revenues or hit my grandma with that axe. I'm a good boy. I'm just nervously mad at just, sir. Let's be sure, quick, hide me, please. Come on, stranger. Come on, stranger, I'll hide you out and it'll find you. Help me loosen up inside the chimney, Ma. Okay, Pa. Mm. <coughs> now, just throw a few more logs in the fire, Ma. No one ever think to look up there. <laughs> Ma, unlatch the door and see who's there. Well, it's only our son, Willie. Willie, are you tired from milking the cow? Uh, shucks, Ma. I done it the hard way, with the help of my baby brother. Now, how can your baby brother help you with the milking? Oh, it's simple, Ma. He just hangs on tight when I chug the cows up and down. Say, <laughs> <laughs> Pa, that brindle cow, she's ailing again. Yeah, you know, what's ailing her? Yeah, you know how she eats lemons when she wants to give cow milk? And how does she eat milk when she wants to give malted milk? Yep. Yep. Today she ate three pounds of chocolate, two cakes of ice, and six little lumber. Heavens to Betsy, what happened? Uh, she just saw her plumber out trying to give good humor. <laughs> well, son, let's sit down to a dinner of corn liquor. Hey, Paul, don't you think we should offer some to the fellow in the chimney? He don't need none more. He's already fried. 
It's a sheriff. All right, Paul Valley, you're harboring a dangerous criminal in this house. You're under arrest. Anything you say will be held against you. Anything? Yes, anything. Dorothy Patrick. Dorothy Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> She demanded. Now, look here, Sharp. Don't get excited. I've already trapped that cook. How is he? I want to grill him. That's been took care of, too. I suppose I get the big reward for catching him. Oh, no. It was my bloodhound that chased him up the hour, and the dog gets the reward. What? That means the old sea didn't have him? Here, Papa. The dog don't like what you're saying. Oh, who's appeared to that moth eaten flea bag? Oh, they say that dog's a man eater. They say he's what? They say he's a man eater. Man eater? That toothless bag of bones? I'll turn him inside out. I'll tie him limb from tail. Oh, 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 oh. Well, Sheriff, don't just stand there. <laughs> Sheriff, don't just stand there. Give that poor dog some bicarbonate of sodium. <laughs> Well, that's what I call a beautiful hunk of drama. Well, now, Rudy, I've been digging into the mail, and we have a letter here from Charlie Isaacs, who once served in the Coast Guard with you. Uh, from the field <laughs> he, uh, he wants to know if you missed the old Coast Guard life. Well, hi, being in the Coast Guard gave me many wonderful experiences. One of the finest is when I ship put into the charming land of Costa Rica. I hear you had a little uh, trouble on the way, though, Rudy. Oh, yes, yes, we did. The ship ran out of water, and I had to wash my pants in Lord Calvert. <laughs> In, uh, in Calvert? Yes. That one time, my pants really got tight. <laughs> when I put them on, I almost became a man of extinction. <laughs> but uh, I did have a grand time in Costa Rica. Well, Rudy, you'd have had a better time if you'd taken me along. You know, uh, I I speak Spanish like a native. Speak Spanish like a native, huh? Oh, fluently. Hmm, that's very interesting. It is tonight we have with us a visitor from that good native Costa Rica, a lovely senorita. In fact, a good neighbor to have no matter where you are. With a basis Latin American songbird and composer, Lolita Castagnaro. Encantadora Lolita, you're really grand. I'll say, which fellas brings us to the highlight of tonight's show? We're ready with an offering that brings Rudy and a lot of, a lot of personal pride. Right, Rudy? Yes, indeed, Dorothy, because we're now going to present two young comedians whom I've had a great deal of faith and whom I had the privilege of introducing to the American radio audience in my own program two years ago this month. Since that time, they've been given their own radio show, and from what I can gather from the boys down at the cigar store, 
Sweeney and March are America's newest and most successful comedy team. And gang, here they are now. Bob Sweeney and Hal March. Welcome, welcome to Command Performance, fellas. Uh, how you do, Mr. Valley? It's Bob, sure, Bob, it's sure if you don't mind, Bob, uh, I think you've said about enough already. What's the trouble, fellas? Why the argument? No argument, really, Rudy. It's just that I can't convince Bob here that in order to be a great radio comedian, you have to do a little reading. Oh, yes, I agree, Harold. You should do a little reading. Uh, excuse me, Rudy. Bob, uh, I know a good book that you might be interested in reading. Oh, what's that, Hi? Well, it's a book entitled Two Years Before the Mass, written by Richard Dana. Oh, what's it about, Hi? Well, it's a sea story about a brutal captain and a weary crew. Well, uh, how does it begin? Well, on the first page, the author begins the story by saying, My name is Richard Dana. I am the author of a... My name is Richard Dana. I am the author of the book, Two Years Before the Mass. And this is a story of inhuman brutality aboard an American merchant schooner in the year 1836. In order to obtain the material for this book, I was forced to sail on a ship owned by the Boston shipping firm of Samuel Hines. Our ship was named after his daughter, Nancy B. The skipper... The skipper was an evil monster who drove his crews with a lash in pursuit of one thing, speed, speed, and more speed. His sole desire was to possess the fastest ship on the open seas. This beast was Captain March. America, filthy swab. Break out the senator, hoist the mainsail. I'll break the record of the Molly Hour. I'll feed your rotten cargoes into the shark. <laughs> Second in command aboard this hell ship was the cruel and equally ruthless second-rate first mate Sweeney, a terror of the sea. Uh, 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 watch it, you guys. <laughs> My name is Richard Dana. And my story begins when I first encountered these two sinister figures on the dark and gloomy waterfront in Boston. They were recruiting a new crew for the Nancy B. Here comes a future member of the Nancy B. crew, Sweeney. Now remember, I'll stop him and you take care of him with his blackjack. Remember, let him have it. Don't worry, sir. I'll let him have it. Mm. Evening, mate. Good evening, sir. You got a cigarette? Yes, I'll let you have one. Got one right here. All right, Sweeney, the blackjack, let him have it. Here you are, mister. <laughs> oh, a blackjack. Thank you. Not at all. Compliment to an SUV. <laughs> Sweeney, did you give a blackjack to him? Is that what you told me? Well, get it back. Great tang hire you Yes, are. sir. Hey, I missed her. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute, sir. I'm, uh, I'm sorry to bother you, but you see, uh, uh, we're Shanghai and some guys, and I'm going to need the blackjack. So, so uh, would you let me have it, please? Certainly. Oh. What happened, Sweeney? You let me have it. Good. Are you hurt? Uh, I don't think so. Is my pomade bleeding? No, you're all right. I'm going to make that Vaseline or something. The pomade isn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> Is my promo bleeding? <laughs> Much funnier. Yeah, that's better. And are always very big. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sweetie. To get back to the strip, here's another guy. I don't muff this one. <laughs> don't worry, Captain. Yeah. Evening, mate. Good evening, sir. You got a cigarette? Yes, I can let you have one. You got one right here. All right, sweetie. The blackjack, let him have it. Matt? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, would you take your hat off, please? What for? Uh, I think you have a little dandruff. Oh. Really? Uh, huh? Oh! My name is Richard Dana. I have a terrible headache. <laughs> 
This is our third day at sea, and I have resigned myself to an unpleasant voyage aboard the Nancy B. The brutality of her captain and first mate are almost unbearable. And besides, their navigation stinks. <laughs> We're lost. Hey, Twain, give me a reading on the compass there. I want to see if our barnacles are parallel with the equator. There. <laughs> What were you, a sea scout? <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Let's see now. Reading on the old compass here. Let's see now. Is the longitude is uh, 45 and the latitude is uh, 68. Yeah. Check longitude 45, latitude 58. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see the map here, Second Queen. Yeah, take a look at the map. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Wait, do you see any yard goods or pots and pans off the starboard bow? No, sir. Why? According to this map here, we should be in the basement of Sears and Roba. <laughs> Tell you what, Twinny, better take it sounding. Put out the sounding line. Aye, right, Captain March. Good boy. Sounding line reading 901. 902. What's that, Twinny? 903, Rod. <laughs> That's a sneaky one, yeah. wasn't Had to go fast to beat that fell over there yeah. with that one. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's bad, Sweeney, that's bad. That's not good, huh? No, that's bad. That's bad, yeah. At the rate we're going, we'll never break that record. Drive the men, Sweeney, drive them! Speed is what I want. Speed! I bet your name is Richard Dana. <laughs> My name... Is Richard Dana. I knew it! <laughs> the captain is still sacrificing his crew for a speed record. The food is terrible. Men are dying like flies. <laughs> Could it have been that DDT we had for breakfast? No, I've had enough. I'm going to speak with the captain. All right, you men, lend a hand and heave two. And if you other men feel like that, get over there and heave two. <laughs> What is it, Dana? I'd like a word with you, sir. What about? The food, sir. We can't stand it any longer. Dana, you're a troublemaker. But, sir, how do you expect us to do our work on this slop you're feeding us? You'll do it, Dana, because I tell you to. That's how. Well, Captain March, I'm telling you right now that the men will have better food or my name isn't Richard Dana. <laughs> My name is Henry Johnson. <laughs> we had been at sea for 40 days without sighting even a seagull. And then one morning... Captain Mark, come up on the deck quickly, sir. What's the trouble, Twenty? Are the men out of hand? Postal, we've just decided a distress flag off the port yard arm. It's a woman. A woman? How do you know? Her distress flag has a two-way stretch. <laughs> That's dirty. <laughs> Must be something. All right, Sweeney, on deck and we'll rescue her. Yes, go, come on. Let's see the is still there. Woman coming alongside with gym shoes. <laughs> Drop the ship's ladder. Man overboard. It's only the sound man, don't worry. <laughs> Grab that ladder and make your way aboard. There you are, ma'am. Now you're safe and sound. Oh, thank you, boys. Thank you. I've been marooned in that rack for 40 days. 40 days? How'd you eat? I made promises to a seagull. <laughs> Madam, I'm Captain March of the good ship Nancy B. Mmm, and handsome, too. Madam, I'm the first mate Twinny of the good ship Nancy B. Oh, you've got a shame. Get up, Twinny. Take this lady down to her quarters. But what quarters? That's right. We don't have any extra rooms, do we? Well, Sorry, ma'am. You'll have to be quartered with the crew. Do you mind? Not if the crew doesn't mind. 
<laughs> Take her below, Sweeney, and explain to the man. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Aye, right, sir. Follow me, miss. All right, sir, guys. All right, now, quiet. Now, come on, you guys. Stop that. Oh, please, guys. Gee whiz. <laughs> uh, now, listen, you guys. I, I got something to say, and I want you to listen carefully. We, we just rescued this woman here from the open sea. And there isn't any spare room on the ship except here. So, so, so she'll have to stay with you guys. Now, uh, uh, how do you feel about that? No, no, we don't want to go about it. Get it out of here. Uh, cut that out, fellas. The captain don't want you to be like that. What's going on down here, Sweeney? Uh, hey, uh, come back a mutiny, Captain. The men won't let, uh, won't let this woman share their quarters. Oh. So they won't let this lady share their quarters, eh? Is that right, men? You re- it is funny, isn't it? <laughs> Is that right, men? You refuse to let this woman share your quarters? Oh! Now, why'd you do that, boys? I've tried to be nice to you, and now here you go and get insane out of it. Thank you very much, Bob, Al, and the supporting players. And now we really are at good night time. We've had a lot of fun filling your mail orders, gang. Tonight, those letters brought in Lolita... And Dorothy, uh, woo, woo, Patrick, and Sweetie and Marsh. And Rudy Valley. And the expert presence of one high alibi. Keep the letters coming, boys. We'll keep trying to fill the orders to the best of our ability. You know, we really feel privileged to be asked in. So, until next time, gang, the best of luck to you. Good night. Whatever our good night. This program is arranged to the aid of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>